Hello, my name is Sebastian. I'm a PhD student at the Ruhr University Bochum, and I'm going to present our work with the title Tortiti Non Interactive Immediate Fault Secret Single Pass Circuit Construction. This is joint work together with Robert Merget and Jörg Schwenk, Ruhr University Bochum, Kai Gellert, University of Wuppertal, and Tobias Sandirk, Paderborn University. Before I present our results, I would like to start with a short motivation and brief introduction to Tor. Providing the ability to browse the web anonymously has become a challenging task in the age of large-scale adversaries. One way to protect yourself against internet surveillance is to use the Onion Routing Network, or short Tor. For this, Alice has to use a special Onion proxy. The Onion proxy builds so-called circuits in the Onion routing network over a path of Onion routers. To connect to web service hosted by Bob, Alice has to start the Onion proxy, and the Onion proxy establishes a session key with each Onion router on the path. For this, a simple two-message protocol is used called NTOR. NTOR is basically a DFM and key exchange. This has to be done for each Onion router on the path, and every time a new session key is established, a new encryption layer is added. So after the circuit construction process, Alice can connect to the web service, and we see we have three different layers of encryption. The different layers of encryption ensure that each Onion router on the path only knows its predecessor and successor. An attacker that observes or even controls one of the Onion routers is therefore not able to link a starting point of the path to an endpoint of the path. And this property is called unlinkability and provides the anonymity in the Tor network. But as you can see, the circuit construction process is not really efficient. We need a lot of messages to establish all these keys. We need n times n plus one messages, which means for a path of standard length three, we need 12 messages. And let's say the latency between the hops is 100 milliseconds, then the duration of the whole circuit construction process is 1200 milliseconds. But the interaction between Alice and the different Onion routers provides a really important property namely fault secrecy. What does fault secrecy mean? Let's say an Onion router establishes different sessions with different clients over some time. And for this, the Onion router uses a long-term key pair. And at some point, an attacker compromises the Onion router and gets the secret key. Then fault secrecy guarantees that the attacker cannot use the secret key to gain any information about already established session keys. All modern key exchange protocols try to provide this property because it prevents, for example, that large scale adversaries store a massive amount of encrypted communication data to decrypt it at a later point in time when the attacker gets access to the secret key. In Android, this is achieved using a Diffie key exchange. So our research question was, can we make this circuit construction process more efficient? Can we get rid of this massive message overhead, but still provide unlinkability and forward secrecy? And our basic approach for this is to use zero round trip time protocols. A zero round trip time protocol, or short zero RTT protocol, give Alice the ability to send encrypted payload within the first message to the Onion router. And a trivial approach to achieve the zero RTT property is to use public key encryption. Here, Alice can use the public key of the Onion router to encrypt a randomly chosen symmetric key. Then she sends the encrypted key to the Onion router, and additionally, she can send encrypted zero round trip time data. The Onion router can use the secret key to decrypt the session key and then decrypt the zero round trip time data. Interestingly, this approach was already used in 
1996 by Goldschlag et al. to build a single pass circuit construction protocol. But this approach has two major weaknesses. First of all, there's absolutely no forward secrecy for the symmetric key. Any attacker that gets access to the secret key of the Onion router can use the secret key to decrypt all session keys that uh, has been encrypted under the corresponding public key. Another weakness is the missing replay protection. An attacker can easily replay this uh, encrypted symmetric key and the, the round trip time data to the onion router. And in the worst case, an onion router would reestablish a, a circuit. And the attacker can use this information to gain any information about uh, 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 starting points and endpoints and break the unlinkability property. So it seems that the interaction between Alice and the Onion router is fundamental basis to achieve forward secrecy. But in 2015, Green and Myers uh, uh, published a new cryptographic primitive called punctuable encryption. And punctuable encryption can be used in non interactive settings to achieve forward secrecy. And non interactive settings are settings in which an initiator sends only one message to a responder to establish a session key. And these settings are, for example, zero round trip time key exchange or email security. So let me give you an intuition on how zero round trip time with punctuable encryption works. Similar to public key encryption, the non in router has a secret and a public key pair. The public key is static and can be used to encrypt a randomly chosen session key. Then Alice sends the ciphertext to the onion router and the onion router decrypts the session key. Then the onion router modifies its secret key. The secret key is non-static and this process is called puncturing. The puncturing algorithm gets its input the secret key, the current secret key and the ciphertext and we get a new secret key. This new secret key can now be used to decrypt all ciphertexts, except the ciphertext we have used to puncture the secret key. And this process can be done over and over again every time a new ciphertext is received. So we achieve immediately for secrecy after puncturing the secret key. Additionally, we get replay protection. An attacker that replace an old ciphertext is not successful because an onion router is not able anymore to decrypt the ciphertext. And we can use these results in Tor to build a single pass circuit construction protocol. And we call this protocol TorTT, which is a combination of Tor plus Z round trip time. In TorTT, each onion router has a secret and a public key pair of a puncturable encryption scheme and the onion routers can compute these keys by themselves. Alice can use the public keys to encrypt three different symmetric keys. Then she sends one onion message to the first onion router on the path. And this onion message contains all ciphertext. And we call this onion message because ciphertext two and three are already encrypted in different layers of encryption. Then the first onion router decrypts the first symmetric key, removes one layer of encryption and sends ciphertext two and three to the second router on the path. The second router on the path again uses secret key to get the symmetric key and sends the last ciphertext to the last router on the path. And we see after three messages, all session keys are established. Now to confirm, the success of the circuit construction, the last router sends an encrypted confirmation message back to Alice and each onion router adds one layer of encryption. We call this single pass because we need only one message sent by Alice to establish all the session keys and to build the circuit. To achieve forward secrecy, each onion router on the path puncture its secret key 
immediately after receiving the ciphertext. And the new secret key replaces the old secret key. And this has to be done for each onion root on the power. So what we get is the first single power circuit construction protocol, which achieves for its secrecy immediately after the circuit construction. And our protocol needs only two times uh, n messages to achieve this. TORTT is fully generic, which means we can use any CCA secure punctual encryption scheme. And let's say the punctual encryption scheme is super efficient, then TORTT is super efficient. If the uh, encryption scheme provides post quantum security, then TORTT is post quantum secure. We analyzed um, our protocol using the Bloom filter punctual encryption scheme uh, by Dela et al. And this punctual encryption scheme offers fast puncturing procedures, small ciphertext, and small public keys. So everything we need for Tor. For a security level of 128 bit, we see that the cons uh, computation times at the client and the onion routers are a bit higher, but getting rid of all these messages, we see that the overall construction time is 500 milliseconds faster than in the current Ntor handshake, assuming that the latency between the hops is 100 milliseconds. But our approach has also a few drawbacks, and we think all these drawbacks are manageable. First of all, Current punctual encryption schemes suffer under large secret keys. This is due to the puncturing property and is unavoidable. <clears throat> so for a lifetime of 28 days for a public key and 1 million requests per day for the onion router, the onion router has to, has to store a secret key of 20 gigabyte size. So onion routers need bigger storage. Another problem is that TORTT has no post compromise security. In the current Ntor handshake, if an attacker gets access to the secret key of the onion router, the attacker has to act as an active man in the middle to read and alter messages. In TORTT, the attacker can do this passively for the rest lifetime of the public key. And Thanks to our fantastic reviewers, we discovered another problem regarding the unlinkability property. In our security model, unlinkability requires that the puncturable encryption scheme has a zero connectance error, which means if we encrypt a symmetric key correctly and the secret, secret key was not punctured for the ciphertext, then the decryption should always be successful. Unfortunately, the Plume filter encryption scheme does not provide perfect correctness. In fact, it has a non negligible correctness error, and this can lead to an attack when passive attacker can break the unlinkability property. But again, we can solve this problem, and for this, let's have a closer look on how we define unlinkability. In our security model, we consider a network in which multiple users build circuits over a path of three onion routers. And here, Alice and Bob use the same middle node. Unlinkability is given if an attacker cannot link outgoing messages of the middle node to the incoming messages. So the um, attacker is not able to say, which user has sent the only message originally. And now let's say we have, an, we have a punctual encryption scheme with non-negligible correctness error. And an attacker can see that an onion will fail at the middle node. And here the onion was uh, uh, sent by Alice. And the attacker can see that a certain circuit is not built then it's easy for an observer to link the last onion message to Bob. But we solve this problem by using a technique we call 
dummy onions. If an onion message would fail at the decryption process, the onion router has to output a dummy onion. And this dummy onion should be indistinguishable from a message that would have been sent if the decryption process was successful. So now the attacker may see that the onion message sent by Alice will fail at the middle node, but the attacker is not able to distinguish the real onion from the dummy onion, and the attacker cannot link the last onion router to Bob, which means we have achieved unlinkability again. So, all in all, we have shown that it is possible to build single pass circuit construction protocols with immediate forward secrecy. Yes, there are a few problems we are working on, and we are currently working on an implementation to use in a real tour environment. So, if you have any questions or if you are interested in working with us, feel free to contact me. Thank you very much for your attention.